Alright, let's get started. So, I'm so excited. And perfect for Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> so, my name is Maisie, and I'm the host, one of the hosts for the Muslim Club of the World in Europe. Uh, very excited for you guys to be here. And, uh, um, as you know, no one can talk to us a lot, so without me, the political world in Europe is absolutely needed. Um, so we started this last September, and uh, some of you, I would bring faces from the last year that was built by the sixty seven people packing a small room. So this is how we actually have the room to network, which is great. Um, so as far as me, um, I'm the managing partner and founder of High Vision Capital, a private equity firm uh, that helps investors pass the invest in the real estate. You know, some of you here uh, know that you uh, maybe sell real estate, and you know, real estate, some of you maybe want to invest in your stock, you can also invest half of the vehicle, the cost of the house on you. Um, I've done um, social media and social media family, and also you know, working with some of the home product opportunities as well. I think the opportunity is a lot. And uh, unfortunately, the, the other host, uh, Brian Major, is not able to meet us today because he just had a baby a couple of uh, weeks ago. So, happy working. Um, and uh, um, another thing I want to mention is uh, um, we usually have this uh, this event, and uh, I want to thank Nick for bringing the water because last time we didn't have enough water, and everyone was like, <laughs> Um, without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome our guest speaker today, uh, Sonny Nick. Uh, he is a panel representative and executive at CoStar. Uh, many of you may or may not be familiar with CoStar, but uh, you know, what I'm actually using a lot for my acquisitions for talking to others. I use it for looking at demographics, comms, um, looking at Sales projected growth um, for the middle area, vacancies, and many other tracks. Uh, it's mostly more than that than I used before, but I recently found out it's actually more than that. Uh, the also go to offices, industrial, and I didn't know that upon.com, which is a question as well as that, so like even there, it's also part of that. So, there's a lot that goes into it. So, um, if you want to be active in that space, we do work for a realtor or real estate group. Um, maybe there's something you want to be interested in focusing on. Um, without further ado, I'd like to have you say. Awesome. Feel free to have the floor and uh, at the end, we'll have to end. Sounds great. Thank you, Macy. Thank you for continuing to put this on. I know I've benefited from it a lot, so hopefully some of y'all have too. Um, yeah, Sam Hewitt with CoStar. We are a commercial real estate data and analytics company. Is anyone here familiar with CoStar? I know Kyle is, Ravon, of course. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people uh, liken it to a national MLS. Um, that is kind of one piece of the puzzle there. Um, we do uh, a lot more than that on the analytics side of things, uh, comps, uh, like Macy mentioned, and, and a lot more. So I'm going to get started in here um, talking more about CoStar. So, uh, largest uh, platform commercial uh, for commercial real estate and data and analytics in the U.S. Um, it ranges from nation to market-wide and even uh, property-specific information. So like on offices or retail properties, you can get stacking plans with tenant information. We also have the largest tenant, uh, collection of tenant data uh, in the U.S. Uh, we collect our data uh, from a lot of different avenues, um, public record being one of them. Uh, Misi touched on apartments.com. This is Mitt right here. If anyone needs uh, some uh, apartment advertising solutions, he's definitely your guy here in northwest Arkansas. Uh, homes.com and, and more. Um, LoopNet, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have ever searched for uh, commercial real estate properties to buy or to lease, but we uh, are the owners of LoopNet.com. Um, but as far as collecting data goes, uh, our, our, our uh, bell cow, I guess, is going to be a collection of 1,500 researchers that sit in Richmond, Virginia. They're qualifying comps. Uh, they're uh, uh, confirming tenancy on properties. Uh, they uh, do so much uh, as far as just inputting a lot of the hard data that we get uh, into CoStar. Um, and so that's just some of the avenues where we gather that information. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with an economic update. If anyone was at the Arkansas uh, uh, Apartment Association um, luncheon last week, I stole some of this stuff from our market uh, 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 analyst, Bill Kitchens, uh, but it's really good information just to, to kind of get an insight as to uh, how Northwest Arkansas has been uh, performing on an economic front. So uh, over here you can see February of 2020, kind of right before things uh, shut down with COVID. So we're using that as a baseline. 
uh, just to look at total employment for uh, the U.S., Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, and Little Rock, you'll see that we did not get hit near as hard as the national average did uh, from an employment standpoint and bounced back. I think it was like a full year uh, quicker than the national average as far as getting back to that baseline uh, from February of 2020 and have outpaced the national average significantly uh, since and being at about 5.5% uh, growth on the employment front since February of 2020. Uh, unemployment, kind of the same story here, not impacted near as hard as uh, the rest of the U.S. was, uh, recovered much more quickly, and uh, have gotten back to a, a very healthy uh, unemployment rate of about 2.5%. Uh, population growth here in the area, um, we've got northwest Arkansas with some other southeastern or uh, 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 markets, Nashville, Tennessee, Charleston, South Carolina, Huntsville, Alabama, uh, lots of markets that we are compared with frequently that are on similar growth trajectories. You can see that over the last, I think it's 12 years, 11 years, uh, we gained over 25% population growth, beating uh, all of these other uh, southeastern markets uh, pretty handily. Uh, net migration, uh, driving population growth. So this is, the, the, the blue bars here are net population change. So that's going to take into account people having kids, uh, people moving in from different markets, um, but the, blue, the, the green line there shows the uh, share of net migration. So that's people moving into our market from outside of our market. You can see historically it was hovering around the 65, maybe 70 percent mark, uh, but now is up around 85 percent, um, making up for 85 percent of the net population growth in northwest Arkansas. So where is all of that population growth happening? Probably no surprise to anyone here that it's mostly happening in Bentonville and in the Rogers area. So Fayetteville's been the hub historically, but uh, for the most part is pretty well built out um, into, you know, Farmington on the west and uh, towards uh, Elkins, Huntsville to the east. So uh, you can see West Rogers in, in particular is uh, one of the areas that has seen the largest annual growth rate of 5.7%. Uh, from 2010 to 2022, uh, with Bentonville not far behind at 5.2. We're projecting about 3.9% growth on both of those submarkets uh, for the future, um, but the other uh, submarkets here in Northwest Arkansas were hovering around 2% population growth during the same time. So that just and 2% is not a small number for population growth, by the way. I think 1% is about normal, maybe even less. So 2% is still uh, a high number, um, but you can see that Bentonville and Rogers are really just uh, running away with it. <laughs> so here's some comparable markets I pulled. Not sure if anyone's familiar with the NWA Council. Um, they are tasked with uh, kind of like economic development for the entire area. They have a bunch of sister cities that they compare us with. So the ones without stars uh, are some of the sister cities. Well, not Austin. They don't compare us with Austin. Everyone else seems to compare us with Austin, though. Um, but Des Moines, Iowa, Huntsville, Alabama, Raleigh, North Carolina are all three uh, that they compare us with. Um, and then Kansas City and Tulsa included in here uh, just for proximity's sake, just to see how we stack up to some of these other markets. Um, so here's some um, unemployment and uh, or employment and economic information uh, that we get from demographics out of the coast out of Coastar. Uh, we have the second lowest unemployment, and I should state that all of these, all seven of these markets up here are well above average in all of these categories. So even if we're in the kind of middle of the pack on some of these, we're still well above national average. But the, all of these are high growth markets. So we have the second lowest unemployment rate behind Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, a little bit middle of the pack for job growth, but we're just behind Austin, Texas, and probably doesn't shock anyone with all of the Silicon Valley uh, companies that have moved there. Uh, second highest population growth, also behind Austin. So I do see uh, a kind of a common theme here and maybe why people compare us to Austin. Uh, and then the third in uh, household income growth, which is a huge metric uh, that people are going to look at whenever moving uh, to this location for uh, their own well-being or for a company's uh, kind of uh, uh, relocation efforts. So any questions on any of the economic or population front before I kind of dive into the office category here? Cool. All right, so we'll take a look at office. I'm going to plug this real quick. This is the Ledger in downtown Bentonville. If anyone hasn't been, it's worth just parking and taking a look. It is a really, really neat building. Um, up here at the top, I'm going to have this on uh, every slide or every uh, uh, asset category. Um, you can just get an idea of what exists. So inventory is the square footage of what exists for that asset type. Uh, what's under construction? 
uh, absorption, net absorption, uh, vacancy rates, market uh, rent per square foot, uh, sales price per square foot, and market cap rates. So um, the net absorption is down slightly from 620 square feet in 2021. That is a massive number. Um, office in Northwest Arkansas has to be one of the best performing uh, uh, markets for office in, in the nation. I think here you'll see the national vacancy rate is about 12 and a half, or almost 13 percent. DFW's at essentially 18. Austin at 14.2. Tulsa at 11.4. I think places like San Francisco and along the coast are upwards of 20, even 30 in some places. Um, so having a 6 percent vacancy here is really, really impressive. Um, and having some good amount of stuff in the construction pipeline there, I feel really good about it uh, being absorbed really quickly after it comes online. Uh, annual rent growth, 3.4%. Not a huge number. Definitely a healthy number, though, especially whenever you compare it to the national average of about 1%. Um, and the sales uh, from a, on a sale price uh, sort of appreciation front, you've got about 10% year-over-year increase um, uh, in, in sales price. Um, so I'm going to break down some of the office submarkets here. Um, again, Bentonville Rogers kind of becoming that hub, uh, especially on the corporate side. Uh, whenever you're seeing a lot of uh, big office leases, a lot of that's taking place in Bentonville and Rogers, whether that be uh, local tenants that are taking on new space or national tenants who have perhaps moved in from the area. I know the ledger building I just showed, they had a some software company with a crazy name moved in from Tennessee here recently and took up a big amount of space. So that's kind of a common theme here lately, uh, especially in Bentonville and in the Pinnacle area here in West, West Rogers. So uh, you can see Bentonville is going to account for the largest um, sort of portion of what's under currently under construction. Uh, probably no surprise there if you take a drive around and see all the dirt work that's going on. Um, West Rogers, so again, thinking of the Pinnacle area, it's really standing out because of the highest market rent per square foot. Um, and I'm going to break this down here by class here in a second, but uh, they're seeing some uh, a, a good amount of vacancy, not a crazy amount by any means, uh, and there's a lot of good things in the work there. Fayetteville has the lowest vacancy far by far at 3.3% with just a little bit under construction. A lot of that is, is Fayetteville's pretty well built out, not much coming online there. Uh, it has been historically the hub for northwest Arkansas. Again, that's kind of shifting north, um, but it is good to see. Um, a lot of activity still going on in Fayetteville. Um, so some of my thoughts on the Northwest Arkansas office uh, market is uh, has to do with kind of a breakdown in the uh, classes of the uh, uh, office properties. So here I've broken out uh, vacancy by the different classes. So you can see Class A has the highest at 11.5, B, 6.5, and then Class C, 2.5. So that is an extremely low number for office vacancies. That might be something you see in industrial or maybe multifamily when things are really good. Um, but as far as office goes, that is fantastic. Um, and then the cause of that is probably going to be the difference in uh, rent per square foot. So class A stuff is going for about 28 bucks a foot on average, class B 22, class C 19. So $6, $7, $8, $9 a, a foot doesn't seem like a lot, but whenever these folks are taking up 20, 50,000 square feet of office space. That is huge overhead for a lot of these companies. Um, but with my thought being that a lot of, uh, we're garnering a lot of attention from national tenants, folks relocating from DFW, from Illinois, from California, New York, they're going to look at 28 bucks a foot and be like, this would get me, you know, like <laughs> a place in the slums where I'm from, whatever it is. So it, 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 I really think, uh, class A is going to be picking up uh, a, a lot more activity here uh, in the near future and probably reaching single-digit vacancy before too long. Um, and all classes were trading around 8% 8, uh, 8 cap rate over the last 12 months. Uh, class C traded at a 9% cap. So what I see that as is probably a lot of good value-add opportunities if anyone's interested in uh, investing in the uh, office market here in Northwest Arkansas. Any questions on office before I move on to retail? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so absorption is just the net change in square footage that is occupied from the previous period that you're looking at, whether it's year over year or month over month. So that's going to factor in everything from properties that were vacant um, or square footage that was vacant and then uh, new deliveries as well. So you always want to see a positive absorption. If, if it is in the negative something is going on there. Um, 
So we don't have to worry about that any, on any of the classes here. Everything's been positive so far. Yeah, anyone else on office? Cool, let's check out retail. Uh, th I'm going to shout out this as well. This is the district in uh, Pinnacle. Uh, it's going to be uh, a combination of retail, office, and multifamily, and I think even a hotel in there um, by the Wiz Invest guys. So it's an awesome, it's all class A. Uh, it's going to be very walkable. They're going for like a live, work, play sort of uh, 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 development there. Um, for retail here in northwest Arkansas, you'll see a very low vacancy rate, 3.3%. Um, that's not, it, it's a very good vacancy rate, but you'll see the national average at 4.3%. The whole nation really as a whole is doing well, uh, on retail. Um, rent growth of near 5%, which is again a solid number, especially whenever you can compare it to the national average of 1.3. Uh, market sales price up 10 bucks, about 6.5% on sales price appreciation. Um, a good amount under construction. Again, uh, the, uh, the district, which I just highlighted there, is going to make up, I think, uh, around 100,000 square feet of that, and then some other uh, large projects going on in the works here. Uh, the absorption number, down about 145,000 square feet from uh, the prior period. So we're looking at mostly 2022 numbers here. Uh, so think 2021, we would have uh, gotten right around 700,000 square feet of absorption. Thinking coming out of COVID, uh, retails really pick back up. People are, um, you know, either taking sublets for people who did have a hard time uh, during the pandemic um, or have, you know, kind of finally come out of the pandemic and are looking to set up shop in the area. Uh, and again, national vacancy uh, and then in the uh, other markets that we've been looking at, all kind of right in line uh, around that 3 4% mark. <coughs> So Fayetteville has kind of stayed the retail uh, hub, if you will, just from an in inventory standpoint. The next two uh, largest uh, submarkets in the area are West Rogers and Bentonville, and neither of them have half of what Fayetteville has. That's just kind of the nature of being a college town and some other factors that go into that. But again, kind of going back to that theme of Fayetteville is pretty much built out, right, um, to where if you're looking in Fayetteville on the north side, there's some stuff available, but you're mostly looking east and west into different sort of uh, towns in the area. West Rogers is a really fun place to watch right now for uh, on the retail side. Again, uh, a lot under construction, uh, the district, which I highlighted, uh, really low vacancy, um, which says a lot, too, because that's a lot of that in West Rogers is going to be Class A retail space. So, again, thinking of national tenants who are probably used to paying instead of 23 bucks, bucks a foot, they might be playing, paying 30 or more. So um, that's definitely one of the benefits of attracting some national attention uh, here in northwest Arkansas. Uh, Bentonville, uh, really good absorption over the last 12 months, uh, especially relative uh, to some of the other submarkets, especially Fayetteville, um, which has almost three times uh, the inventory. Uh, Bentonville had the same, almost the same absorption there. Um, probably no surprise to anyone that a lot of retail has been going in and being occupied in Bentonville as well. <clears throat> so this is something I wanted to touch on while we're talking about retail. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, this is the nation as a whole. This is not Northwest Arkansas, um, but it is, uh, I think, a good picture of the general feeling um, of, of retail spending habits here in um, Northwest Arkansas and everywhere else. So we used PCE here, um, similar to CPI. Instead of CPI is tied to like products specifically, PCE is tied to expenditures by individuals instead. And you can see that's gone ticking way up and then drop down during COVID and then tick back up very quickly afterwards. And uh, almost exactly conversely, uh, consumer sentiment has gone way down since then. So I don't see it as being anything to worry about here necessarily uh, with lower cost of living. Uh, again, increasing median household uh, incomes, things like that are really propping up uh, the uh, retail market here. So yeah, again, despite the effects of inflation, um, the cost of living, uh, increasing wages in the area are definitely doing wonders for the retail market here. Um, I said it earlier too, but here's the national average of uh, per, on per square foot basis for retail. This is what Northwest Arkansas is. Um, so you can imagine folks coming from larger markets are used to paying much higher in rent. So it makes it a very attractive uh, market where people are spending money um, in the retail sector. Um, and I, I, I said it earlier as well, uh, inventory basis, uh, on an inventory basis, Fayetteville 
has been historically the uh, retail hub, um, but with all of the migration into Northwest Arkansas, focusing primarily in Bentonville and Rogers, uh, that is definitely shifting north. Um, sales volume for retail has been pretty slow over the last 12 months. Again, that's not unusual across really all the assets, uh, asset categories because of a rally in 2021 after coming out of the pandemic. Um, I think it might be a year. I think it might be a slow year as far as transactions go on some of these properties uh, for 2023, but I think 2024 and beyond we'll see uh, a pretty significant uptick in um, the amount of transactions go. Any questions on retail? For a retail space? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, it depends on the tenant, right? It, it's always going to depend on the tenant. Um, restaurants, obviously, Kyle, what does a restaurant go for, you think? What's what's the normal size of a restaurant? 5,000 square feet? Four to 5,000 square feet. If you're looking at a cloth, uh, clothing line or something like that, it might be a little bit smaller. Department stores can take up 50,000 square feet at a mall. It's going to have to do with the tenant and as well as the uh, retail center type. So there's several different types um, from power centers to strip centers, um, single tenant retail shops. Uh, it just depends. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a great question. Anything else on retail? Cool. I'm going to take a quick look at industrial here. Um, inventory, uh, 46 million. Uh, that's a very high number relative to uh, what we've been looking at on the other asset types. But if you think about industrial properties, they're very large. So um, there being 800,000 square feet under construction seems like a big number, although it's really not. We could use a whole lot more of that. Um, 1.7 million being absorbed. That's down from over 2 million um, the month prior. Um, again, just kind of an inventory thing. There's not enough uh, existing. Also supported by the fact that it's a 1.2% vacancy rate. Um, I would love to say that makes Northwest Arkansas special, but nationally it's at 4.3, and then you can see some of these markets we've been looking at are at 6, 5, 4. So we're definitely well below uh, them on vacancy, but as a, as a national, uh, from a national scope, industrial has been performing very well uh, from a vacancy standpoint. Um, annual rent growth of over 11%. So um, whereas I remember, uh, I think it was like September of last year, multifamily had a 14% rent growth, which was just kind of unheard of. Uh, industrial has quietly really been kind of blowing the blowing, been blowing rent growth out of the water at 11%, and then also seeing um, a 16% uh, sales price per square foot appreciation year over year. So it's been a very um, desirable uh, uh, asset category simply based on the fact that there's just not enough uh, that exists currently. Um, so we've got some new top uh, submarkets here whenever we're looking at uh, industrial. So Springdale at the top here uh, has the largest inventory um, as well as the largest under construction um, and the lowest vacancy rate. So um, probably not uh, that surprising to anyone who lives in the area that Springdale is kind of the hub for some of the industrial properties. Uh, Bentonville, this one kind of shocked me that this was up here. I didn't know there was, the, I guess, out west towards the airport and stuff. There's a lot of uh, industrial out there, but it's uh, in a market that, what were we at, 775 uh, per square foot. This is significantly higher at 9 bucks a foot in Bentonville. Um, and then East Rogers, just really healthy all the way across as far as uh, what's uh, existing there, absorption rate, and a very low uh, vacancy rate as well. Um, yeah, there's just not enough inventory. I was telling, I think, Wes earlier, if anyone knows anyone with just some, some land available and has been thinking about developing something, uh, industrial is probably a smart bet, multifamily as well. Um, but right now, so for industrial, rent rates are so low, um, just for the nature. It's a box with cement floors. Um, that land costs have gone way up here in the past five years or so. That kind of affects penciling out industrial properties from the get-go. Um, whenever you're charging seven bucks a foot or whatever it is, it, 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 and, and not to mention rising construction costs and things like that, it can really make uh, uh, make it hard to uh, get the amount of industrial space that we need. But we definitely need more. Um, here are all the different kinds of uh, industrial properties that we track: warehouse, specialized manufacturing and flex, it's all under 2%, so you can really do no wrong right now. 
um, if you're in the industrial space. Uh, I, I said it earlier, and we absorbed 800,000, or uh, we are, have 800,000 square feet under construction. Uh, it's not near enough. We could probably support a couple million more square feet. Um, over the last 10 years, there have only been two deliveries of a million plus square feet. It's just something that hasn't been a big focus here. Um, and uh, again, uh, the de uh, development is an issue, uh, the main obstacle being the current cost of land and construction costs. Um, I brought up NWA Council earlier. One of their big initiatives is bringing STEM jobs here um, to Northwest Arkansas. STEM jobs require a lot of warehousing space, light manufacturing, laboratories, things like that, that fall within the industrial space. Um, so if we're wanting to uh, really uh, incentivize that, we're going to need some space for these folks to come to whenever they're here. Um, and almost all of the projects are taking place, uh, uh, construction projects are taking place in Springdale and Lowell. So that's kind of continuing to stay the hub for uh, industrial developments here uh, in northwest Arkansas. Any questions on industrial? For uh, here, a lot of transportation. So think, you know, J.B. Hunt, of course, uh, PAM Transportation. Uh, they own a lot of their own. It might be where their office is at. Um, but logistics in general is, is a big uh, tenant for industrial. And that's mostly nationwide, but here especially, they t take up a large percentage. Uh, we have a lot of flex space um, in northwest Arkansas, too. So that tenant can really vary on their profile. It's a lot of... Uh, people in the trades, so think of uh, uh, people who might contract for like Cox Communications or something. They need a place to park their truck and store their equipment and things like that. So really, the interesting thing about industrials, it can range from a 2,500 square foot flex space that has a little bit of an office component to it to you know a million square foot uh, industrial warehouse that's just nothing in it um, except for maybe some air conditioning. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that's spot on. Um, yeah, the the main issue being that it requires such a large piece of land where you could you know put a retail space or potentially maybe an office uh, on an acre. You can't really do anything industrial on an acre, so you need some very large tracts to make anything work. Land size for industrial. Again, it varies depending on if you're looking at flex or if you're looking at warehouse space. Warehouse space, uh, 20 acres minimum probably, and that'd be on the smaller side for, for a, a warehouse. I, I'd say 100 plus for anything that's like sizable. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Cool. We're going to wrap it up here with uh, multifamily, and I'm sure that's probably what most people were waiting for, so that's why I put it last. Um, inventory, um, we're at about 40,000 units, about 1,700. Mitt, you were spot on with 1,800 earlier under construction now. Uh, uh, we went down about 50% on absorption, which seems maybe alarming um, uh, from that standpoint, although if you look at national trends right now, we uh, as a nation have really plateaued um, and even started to uh, to decline um, on the multifamily front, whether that's rent growth or absorption. Um, we're really bucking that trend, though, here in northwest Arkansas. There's a lot of great uh, positive signs here. Uh, vacancy rate has uh, ticked up to 5.1%. I think it was at 3-ish whenever I looked in, like, September or August of last year. So it's gone back up. But, again, that is not an alarming number from a vacancy standpoint at all. Um, asking rent per unit, a thousand bucks. So that's going to take everything from studios to three bedrooms and class C to class A. So we can get more granular on that. If anyone wants to do more granular, um, sort of research on multifamily, reach out to me. I'll be happy to help. Um, uh, market sales price per unit, uh, 130,000 bucks. I think it was at like a, around a hundred, um, in 2021 sometimes. So that's gone up a whole lot and cap rate. Uh, at 5.3 has actually gone down, um, which is crazy to see. It's been, you know, in the fours before, um, so 5.3 is probably a good, healthy cap rate for the time being. 
Uh, I mentioned absorption being down about 50%. Uh, rent growth still hovering around 10%. It's not the 14, 15% that we saw sometime last year, but 10% is still very, very strong, uh, especially whenever you compare it to the national average at about 3%. Um, sales uh, price per unit up nearly 12% over year, year over year. And then looking at some national um, and uh, other market uh, vacancy numbers, just if, in case you think 5% might be high, it's definitely not. National vacancies at 6.5, uh, DFW 8, 8.5. Austin 9, and Tulsa 8.2. Um, so looking at some multifamily submarkets here, Bentonville and Rogers, um, it kind of gets lumped into one um, on CoStar here, but you can see they have uh, the highest by far uh, 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 as far as what's under construction, um, and for Fayetteville has the lowest vacancy rate. So common theme from what we were looking at, at on, on office and retail earlier, it's just built out. There's not as much coming online. You can see there's not even half of what's coming online in Fayetteville as there is in Bentonville. Um, and then Springdale and Tawnytown, this is really impressive. Uh, they are closer to Bentonville and Rogers than they are Fayetteville uh, for the market asking rent, and that is 12% rent growth um, over the last uh, year. So if anyone's thinking about, you know, a value add opportunity or something, I think uh, that Springdale, Tawny Town area is a very good uh, submarket to be looking in right now. So I'm going to go back to some of the uh, markets that we compare ourselves uh, to or some that are nearby. Uh, we have the highest rent growth and the lowest vacancy of any of these comparable or nearby markets. And if that's not enough to just show you um, that the demand is still strong in this area, uh, I don't know what would be. Those are definitely the two leading indicators as far as the health of a market in a certain asset <laughs> uh, category. Uh, a little bit middle of the pack uh, as far as what's under construction as a percentage goes. We're at 5.4%. Uh, You'll see that Austin, Raleigh, and Huntsville are all in the teens. So my big question kind of to myself is could Northwest Arkansas support that level of construction? I don't know about tripling-ish our construction numbers here uh, in the short term, but I do know uh, we definitely have a lot more room to grow um, on the multifamily side. Uh, sales over the last 12 months have slowed. I think I mentioned the same thing on retail. Again, it was just there was a lot of transactions happening prior to COVID, post-COVID. Um, people are probably holding on a little bit right now the way interest rates are going um, as far as uh, trading anything. But I expect that, again, to uh, pick up here uh, in the near future. But cap rates have remained steady. So as far as the value of that product goes, it, it's remained steady um, over the last 12 months. So, again, another strong indicator. <clears throat> that it's a healthy um, a healthy asset class here in Northwest Arkansas. So these are kind of my personal uh, uh, picks for where I would look at investing in Northwest Arkansas on a multifamily front. Um, I lumped them in a little bit, but Bentonville and Centerton, too bad Brian's not here. I would have given him a shout out for watercolors. Um, but again, going back to some of the first slides talking about uh, population migration, job creation, uh, things like that, it definitely makes for an appealing opportunity uh, to either develop or value-add properties in Bentonville and Centerton. Uh, rent growth of 9% um, and uh, sales price appreciation just shy of 10%. Um, a significant drop in the construction pipeline. Um, again, land there or here-ish uh, in ben Bentonville and Centerton is probably the most expensive that it's at. I mentioned this for uh, industrial obviously being a factor just with uh, the way the numbers work there. But the same thing for uh, uh, multifamily properties as well. You have such high construction costs relative uh, to to industrial that land costs uh, rising significantly can really uh, kind of hamper what you're looking at developing or, or bringing out of the ground. Um, Rogers and Lowell, um, lower cost of land um, and existing properties relative to uh, the Bentonville and Centerton area, I think probably provides uh, a, a little bit easier access for investors or developers who are starting uh, in the uh, uh, multifamily area here in northwest Arkansas. Rent growth is still strong at 8.4%, uh, sales appreciation of 11.1%, um, and the construction pipe line up almost 150% year over year. Uh, I know another large uh, property was just announced in, on the west side of Lowell um, that's coming up out of the ground later this year. So um, that's a good place to look as well. Uh, Springdale and Tawnytown, um, probably the least expensive of the submarkets to look for as far as looking for land or uh, acquiring a property for um, a value add play. 
um, uh, 10 per, with still enjoying 10.5% rent growth and nearly 14% sales appreciation, uh, 5% vacancy and 500 units under construction. Um, I, I imagine uh, Springdale and Tawny Town growing further east and west. I know the east side of Springdale, there's a lot of room over there. The reserve at Springdale, um, I think, is over there on the east side, right? Off 265-ish. Yeah. Oh, the, the, I think there's a reserve Tawny Town and Springdale. Yeah, so, but, yeah, to my point, the, the, that that uh, development is going to kind of stretch west into Tawny Town following 412. Uh, and also east where there's just more uh, available land uh, to develop. Uh, Fayetteville, again, <laughs> most built out, um, has more double than double the inventory of any of the other uh, submarkets, the closest being Springdale and Tawny Town, um, supported by a, a, a market low 2.9% vacancy rate, and the student population there is obviously going to have an effect on that. Uh, and I think I just saw that they announced a, another record-breaking enrollment um, this year, so that's a good sign if you're doing any multifamily in Fayetteville. Um, and despite d constricted supply and steady demand, uh, it's still seen uh, rent growth in the ar area of 6.5% and uh, has a sales strong sales appreciation of 12.5%. So not as high of rent growth in the area, um, probably because of Lindsay. Um, if we're being perfectly honest, they own so much down there that, and it's older inventory, they just don't need to uh, raise the rates as much. Um, but um, it's still growing uh, at a healthy clip of 6.5%, which I think still beats the national average um, and definitely seeing uh, a solid uh, sales price appreciation. So my top thoughts on multifamily. Um, we're at top five non-tertiary, so anything like above 2,000 units uh, on the multifamily front in rent growth and top 10 uh, in regards to stabilized vacancy. So again, those are the two leading indicators as far as the health of a market, especially whenever you're thinking about investing in an area. Um, and I think we're going to remain a, a strong uh, market for development um, and investment. Uh, aging inventory, steep land prices, high construction costs. I've probably said that 10 or a dozen times already tonight. Uh, but I think Class B and Class C properties are really what people are going to hone in on as far as uh, doing some value-add plays in the area. Uh, new developments in Centerton, Lowell, Tawny Town that we mentioned, I think are good for kind of filling in the gaps, if you will. So um, we've obviously got our hubs of Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville, but the, the smaller areas in between are just si outside. You're going to find cheaper land out there um, and, and have a lot of uh, a lot easier access uh, to developing new properties in those areas. Um, and then, yeah, just hammering the point home, we do need more inventory. Um, at the uh, Arkansas Point, uh, Apartment Association luncheon last week, our market analyst was in town, and he had to have said we need in more inventory here at least 20 times. It's just something that uh, um, we really need to hit home on. Um, so if anyone knows any developers who are thinking about it, let's tell them to hit the trigger. Uh, as far as what? Yes, yes, absolutely. Just with the rate at which the population in this area is growing, um, five percent in Bentonville and Rogers is a pretty unheard of uh, rate of growth. I mean, Austin is seeing a lot of that too. But again, a lot of employers moving to that, to that area, we're experiencing some of the same, um, or some people who are just wanting to get out of. I live next to like four people from Portland, Oregon. You know, they, they just kind of want a, a change of scenery. So. Um, yes, we can absolutely support that. Um, more more units in the pipeline. Um, I think yeah, that was it. Any any questions about multifamily or anything else in the presentation? And I've got cards here at the front, cards at the back. If anyone wants to grab any, yes, sir. Like the the their share of uh, absorption? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't look that up. I'm not sure if we'd be able to on our side. Um, but I'm sure cross referencing, you know, enrollment numbers and who lives off off campus. We do, yeah. So we have student. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we could get there. Yeah. 
Right. Twenty seven. Twenty seven, yeah. Mm hmm. Do you have a question? Yeah, I, I can send this to whoever wants it. Just grab a card of mine or give me yours and I can send it. Okay. Move here. Yeah, after after Tyson essentially did the same thing for some plants in Illinois. Yeah. Yeah, we, we absolutely need more inventory here on the multifamily front. Um, and we need nicer stuff too. So, yeah, that Class B, Class C stuff, uh, especially kind of on the Fayetteville, Springdale side of things, uh, could make for some really enticing value add plays for sure. Cool. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you all. I appreciate you letting me spend uh, Valentine's Day with you all. <laughs>